Yo, 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 in this video, I'm going to be discussing a question from J Advanced 2020. I'm not going to be solving the question. My aim in this video is to highlight a point where there is a seemingly contradiction to Ohm's law. Let's just first read the question. Shown in the figure is a semicircular metallic strip that has thickness T and resistivity rho. Its inner radius is R1 and outer radius is R2. If a voltage V0 is applied between its two ends, a current I flows in it. So, here the current I is flowing because of this voltage V0 applied. In addition, it is observed that a transverse voltage delta V develops between its inner and outer surfaces purely due to kinetic effects of moving electrons. Now, this is important. A transverse voltage delta V develops between its inner and outer surface due to purely kinetic effects of the moving electrons. The point is that there is a voltage difference between or a potential difference between the inner and the outer surface, but there is no current across it. There is no current flowing from the inner to the outer surface or vice versa. If I look at the trajectory of the current, that will be in the form of semicircles. If I talk in terms of current density, I will have a current density in the tangential direction. And that means I will have an electric field in the tangential direction. Now, because current is a flow of positive charge, the electrons will be flowing in the opposite direction. And because the electron is performing circular motion, it will have an acceleration towards the center of V squared by R. And this acceleration will be provided by some electric field between the inner and the outer surface. So, that electric field have to, will have to be radial and it will have to be radially outwards because the electron charge is negative and a radially outward electric field will produce a radially inward force that will provide the required centripetal acceleration. So then the question becomes that if there is an electric field present in the radial direction, why is there no current density in the radial direction? The current density is completely in the tangential direction. So Er is not zero and yet a radial component of the current density is zero. So obviously J is equal to sigma E is either not applicable or it is not valid. This is what I am going to be addressing in this video. Let's have a look. So I have just drawn the same diagram. Uh, I have an electric field in a tangential direction that is driving the current which is again tangential and I have a radially outwards electric field and the result, this is the resultant electric field of the tangential and the radial component. And so you can see that the current densities and the net electric field has some angle between them, clearly in contradiction to Ohm's law. So is Ohm's law violated here or is Ohm's law not even applicable here? Let's answer this question. So it turns out Ohm's law is actually a special case of what is known as the Drude equation. Now, what is the Drude equation? Uh, first, let us analyze Ohm's law a little bit carefully. J is equal to sigma E is Ohm's law. I can write E as J by sigma, where J is minus any V vector. Here, the negative sign denotes that current density is opposite to the velocity of electrons. N is the number of electrons per unit volume. E is the magnitude of the electron charge. So, my electric field will become minus any by sigma V vector by substituting J here. Now, what is the force on an electron by the electric field? That will be minus E times E vector. So, if I were to just multiply this equation by the electron charge, I will get minus E E vector is N E squared by sigma times V vector. And taking this term to the left hand side, I have minus E E vector minus N E squared by sigma V vector is 0. Now, this first term is the electric force. The second term is minus n e square by sigma v vector. It is it's like a force that is opposite to velocity and proportional to the magnitude of the velocity. It's like a viscous force or a drag force or what we can also call as the dissipative force and this is produced due to collisions of the electrons. So then this equation here simply becomes a force equation where you have the resultant of the electric force and the dissipative force resulting in zero force. When the net force is zero, it implies that we have assumed the electron velocity 
to be a constant. Here velocity refers to the drift velocity, the average velocity for the electrons. We have, we have assumed that to be constant with respect to time. This is what this force equation tells us. Now here the dissipative force which was minus Ne square by sigma times V vector. I am going to write it in terms of current, current density. It will be convenient later on we will see. So I am going to write minus NeV vector as J vector. So I get my dissipative forces Ej by sigma. You can see the dissipative force is in the same direction as the current density which is opposite to the velocity of electrons. So this force will be opposing the velocity of electrons. So now let us look at what the Drude equation is and how that is related to the question given in J. So Ohm's law is basically in other words a force equation that states that the resultant of the electric and the dissipative force is 0. This is what we saw here. Now clearly this is a special case where the electron velocity has been taken to be constant. The Drude equation on the other hand is simply the general form where you can assume the electron to have some acceleration. So I will have the electric force and the dissipative force both resulting in mass times acceleration of the electron. And this is nothing but what is called as the Drude equation. And you can see Ohm's law is a special case of the Drude equation where the acceleration is of the electrons is assumed to be 0. So in general E vector is not equal to J by sigma and clearly Ohm's law is not a general case. This is what was important in the question in J. They expected you to take into account the acceleration of the electrons which we usually neglect in most problems because usually this term is quite small. But in this particular question, if I just go back to the question, the transverse voltage is developed due to purely kinetic effects of the moving electron. So, what do they mean by kinetic effects of the moving electron? It is in fact this term. This is what has the information about the motion of the electron, which is the kinetic effect of the electron motion. Th that phrase, the kinetic effect of electron is what tells us that J wanted us to consider this term as non-zero. So let's just draw the FBD of the electron and apply Drude equation. So I have a tangential electric field. Let me just, so I have a tangential electric field in the clockwise direction. I have a radially outward electric field. So the force on the electron will be opposite to electric field because of the negative charge. I'll have a tangential electric force E times E theta and a radially inwards electric force E times E r and of course a dissipative force that we need to take into account which will be in the direction of the current density so in the clockwise direction. Now since we can safely assume that this current is a constant with time the drift velocity is also constant with time and therefore in the tangential direction there is no net there is no net acceleration and hence these two terms will simply cancel each other out which is what I have written here E e theta is E j by sigma and you simply get j is equal to sigma E theta. So in the tangential direction we simply recover back our Ohm's law. But in the radial direction now there is no current density but that does not mean that electric field has to be zero because Ohm's law is no longer applicable here. In the radial direction I have an electric force equaling mass into acceleration and the acceleration would be the centripetal acceleration. So I will write EER is mv squared by r and this is how you get a radial electric field and thus a transverse voltage between the inner and outer surface and the Drude equation tells us that you can have an electric field without needing any current density because of this right hand side term. So in conclusion even though we do not have any current flowing along the radius in the radial direction we can still have a potential difference. So hopefully this resolves the apparent contradiction to Ohm's law. The whole, the whole point was that Ohm's law is not valid in the first place in the radial direction. With a little bit of logic you could have just solved the question by applying force equation in the radial direction and not worrying about whether Ohm's law is valid or not in the exam itself. But it is important to know why you can have a potential difference without having any current. And that is what the Drude equation will explain. So one last thing in the video what I am going to do is I am going to just analyze this Drude equation a little bit more and let us see what this term can imply for the circuit equation. So I am going to consider the one dimensional case. So there is only 
electron motion in a straight line that is what i am going to be assuming so i have a conductor with cross sectional area a an electron is flowing to the left because of an electric field produced to the right i am assuming that the length of the conductor is l so i will write the root equation as the electric force plus the dissipative force should be equal to mass times acceleration here i have drawn the fpd of the electron i have an electric force to the left and since the electrons are moving to the left i'll have the dissipative force to the right so this is the resultant force should be equal to mdv by dt i'm going to convert everything into current because that will be convenient so i am going to write j is equal to i by a and v is equal to i by any a by a very uh, familiar equation and this is the equation that i get just by just substituting j and v in terms of i now what i want to do is i want to write this equation in terms of the potential difference in terms of the resistance so in order to create those terms i'm going to just multiply this entire equation by l by e so the electron charge will cancel out on the left hand side and i'll have this equation you can just check that for yourselves now, e into l will electric field into the length will simply be the potential difference which i have represented by capital v and this term here l by sigma a will be rho l by a that is nothing but the resistance the second term will be ir and then, then i'm just taking the right hand side term over to the left hand side and if you have watched my previous rare video about kinetic inductance you will recognize this term immediately this term is nothing but the kinetic inductance and if you haven't watched the video i have put in the link in the description do watch it because that will give you uh, another perspective on kinetic inductance so like i had mentioned in the video about kinetic inductance this term is usually negligible so we will usually neglect this term and recover back our ohm's law in steady state v minus ir will be exactly equal to zero so i hope this has resolved the apparent issue with applying ohm's law in the question given by j that's it for today see you guys next time good night